just finished my run, made 46 coins today. So today we're gonna talk strategy. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what it is that I'm doing with my shoes to earn $200 per day. I'm also going to share with you my strategy to get to four to $500 per day within the next month. So we're gonna talk about exactly what to look for when you're going to buy your first sneaker and exactly what you should be focusing on when it's time to level up your sneakers. You wanna make sure that your sneakers are optimized to perform the best to earn you the most tokens possible. All right, so I know a lot of you are probably still trying to get your hands on an activation code. I unfortunately do not have activations code to be able to give out to everybody. I get like one activation code every other day or something like that. And I have a long, long line of people waiting and asking me for these activations codes. So your best shot is on their Discord still. You need to go on there and find someone else that already has the app and see if you can get an activation code from them. All right, so from here on out, I'm assuming that you've already got your activation code, you've already transferred over Solana to your Steppen wallet, and you're ready to buy your new shoes. If you're new to Steppen and you didn't see the original video, then make sure to go to my YouTube channel and click right here where it says New Steppen Beginner's Guide. That will break down Steppen for you and walk you through how to get started. So a few days ago, I started tracking exactly how much I'm earning every single day, including what it cost me to repair my sneaker and what it cost me to level up my sneakers. Unfortunately, I didn't start tracking this when I first started with the app back a month ago. So I made an estimation here on what my principal, my invested principal is, and I'm, I'm sitting around $7,500 with four sneakers currently. And I'm currently making between 200 to $215 per day jogging or walking. You can see that my earnings have been increasing as I've leveled up my shoe. So I've basically been earning in the range of 42 to 45, but it cost me about five to repair my shoe, plus the cost of leveling up to the next level. You can see in the last four days alone, I've done over $800 in earnings, minus the repairs and minus the level up cost. I've done a total of $438.66 in profit. So I'm basically making over $100 per day after taking out repair costs and level up costs. Eventually my level up costs will be gone in about 11 days or so. So then it'll just be pure profit. And I'm expecting my earnings to also grow in that time span. All right, so let's take a look at what's important when you're first buying your first sneaker. Before I show you guys the most optimal strategy for stepping to earn the most amount of money possible, make sure to smash that subscribe button. If you want to make money either trading through passive income or just want to stay up to date on the latest crypto trends, I upload a video almost every single day about these topics. So please smash that subscribe button so that you never miss another opportunity to make money in crypto again. In addition to that, I answer every single DM that I get on Instagram and I also answer every single comment. So if you have any questions about anything that I'm covering in today's video, drop it in the comments below. All right, so let's open up our apps and go over to the marketplace. The first thing you need to look at when you're choosing a sneaker is what type of sneaker is it? The way that you can filter these sneakers is by going to where it says filter, hitting where it says sneaker, and under class, deciding which sneaker you want to purchase. So if you want a walker, you just hit walker and confirm, and you will see that all the sneakers will turn to walkers. I myself use a jogger, and I will tell you guys why I think this is one of the best strategies if you're like me and can't run every day for 25 minutes. So the reason I prefer joggers over walkers and runners is because with joggers you can either jog or walk yes that's right with a jogger you don't actually have to jog you can walk at a fast pace and still earn tokens and if you remember from my last video joggers make more per energy than walkers so even if you plan on walking i 100 percent recommend you to get joggers because you can still walk at a fast pace and earn more per energy. So next you will notice the mint and the level. So what exactly does that mean and is it important? So mint simply means how many times that shoe has been used with another shoe to mint a brand new shoe. 
basically the shoes breed a new shoe. You will notice that the more mints a shoe has, the cheaper they are, the less mints a shoe has, the more expensive they are. That's because if you look at this chart here, you will see that if you're minting with two shoes with zero or one mint on them, the cost is 200 regardless. But if one of your shoes has two mints and the other shoe has zero or one mint, the price goes up to 250. And if both of your shoes have two mints, the price goes up to 300. And you can see that the higher the mint count, the more expensive it costs to mint new shoes. That's why you will notice that shoes with higher mint counts are going to be cheaper. Starting off, I recommend just getting the shoe with the best base stats. And I'll cover what good base stats means, but I don't think you should be too focused on the amount of mints yet. However, if you already know that you wanna to get to, let's say nine shoes and you wanna do it fast, then maybe you might wanna consider the amount of mints that each shoe has. But the way that I did it, I bought a shoe with two or three mints that had good base stats and I worked my way up. Eventually I flipped that shoe for 15 sol and I bought two new shoes with zero or one mint on them. And that's part of how I got to four shoes. All right, so we've decided that we're going to start off with a jogger. We've decided that we're gonna go for a floor price. It's the most efficient way to enter into the market. So we're basically looking for a shoe with probably two or three mints on them. Now the next step is that we need to look at what the base stats of each shoe is and we need to try to choose the shoe at the cheapest price with the best base stats. So how do you know what's considered good base stats. So these are the rules of thumb. The main thing is for efficiency and resilience to be over 10 together. And efficiency is the most important attribute on your shoe. That's basically what determines how much you're going to earn per energy. So ideally you want that one to be the highest out of both efficiency and resilience. Now, don't get tricked by shoes like this one. When you open this up and you see 18.9 efficiency, you're like, wow, that's amazing. But you see how it has a green bar? That means that this shoe has already been upgraded a bit. So to see the actual real base stats, what you have to do is hit where it says base and you'll see that its actual base stats are 2.9 for efficiency and 1.4 for resilience. That equals 4.3, so that means that this shoe is no good. So looking at another one, you see this one has a base stats of 4.5 and 1.7 on efficiency and resilience. Again, that's no good, is not enough. This one's a little bit better. You can see that it has 5.8 plus 1.8. So that's around 7.6. That's not bad, but we want a little bit better if we can find something better. I'm not gonna lie, guys. It does take a little bit of time. You will have to put some time in to find the right shoe. This one is 7.9, so even closer. So the idea is you want to get as close to 10 as possible. If it gets out of your price range, then just find the cheapest one with the best efficiency on it. So this one's not bad. You can see that it's 4.1 and 5.4. That's 9.5. I obviously would like the efficiency to be a little bit higher, but this one's actually even upgraded a bit. So let's say that we decided to buy this one at 11.999 sold. Another thing that you will notice is these little locks with E, L, R, and L on them. Now what that is, is that's where you place gems. As of right now, gems really are not that important and I don't think they become important until you max out your shoe. What each of those letters stand for is for one of your attributes. So E stands for efficiency, L for luck, C for comfort, and R for resilience. So obviously the more E and R that it has, the better, but again, not too important when you're first starting out. So I would say, don't worry too much about that. So now you got your first shoe, you're super excited, and you wanna go for a run right at that moment. Unfortunately, when you first get your shoe, you start off with zero energy, so you will have to wait about 24 hours to get your full two energy. At that point, remember that energy replenishes 25% every six hours until it reaches the energy cap. The only way to increase your energy cap is by getting more sneakers. So when you first get your initial 
sneaker, you will have two energy. Each energy equals five minutes. If you wanna double that up, then you will need to get three sneakers. That would get you to four energy, and you then have 20 minutes of runtime. Again, if you wanna raise that cap, then the next number is nine sneakers, then 15, and then 30 sneakers. So here are currently the optimal shoe combinations. If you're only gonna be using one shoe, I recommend just start off with a common, but if you have the capital, you can start with an uncommon shoe as well. A common shoe gives you 10 minutes, uncommon shoe will give you 15 minutes of running, and that's going to run you currently around 11 soul for a common, and the floor right now on the uncommon sneakers are 58 soul. If you do decide to go to three shoes, the optimal strategy is to have one uncommon shoe that you use to actually run with or walk with, and then two common shoes because you're not going to be using them anyways, and they will be cheaper. This will get you 25 minutes per day to run or walk, and it'll basically cost you about 58 soul plus 22 soul. So that's 80 soul, currently around $8,000. And then the final level is to get nine shoes. To do that, the optimal strategy will be to have one uncommon shoe plus eight common shoes. Now it says 35 minutes here, but that's incorrect. This actually will give you 10 energy and 50 minutes of walking or running. After that, I don't think it's really worth to continue on to 15 sneakers or 30 sneakers. The ROI is not as good, but if you have the capital, of course you can do it. I'm personally going to be staying at nine sneakers and uh, 10 energy. Now, after going on your first run, you will notice that the durability ability on your shoe has gone down. Now that will not affect your next run and you could technically not repair your shoe until you get under 51 energy because it really won't have an effect on you or your earnings. However, I recommend just repairing your shoe every single day before you level up because as you level up, the repairs get more and more expensive. So the optimized strategy to do after going for a run, repair your sneakers and then level them up. So after you repair your sneakers and leveled it up, you will need to wait an amount of time, whatever it tells you, depending what level you're going to, before you get your points. Now, depending if you have a common or uncommon shoe is how many points you get. Common shoes get four points every new level. Uncommon shoes get six points every new level. If you currently look at my shoe, you will see that I have only upgraded two different attributes. That's efficiency, which is getting the majority of my upgrades, and resilience, which I put a little bit of upgrades into it. So the way that the game is currently, the most important attribute by far is efficiency. That's what determines how much you're earning per energy that you're spending. Spending. The next most important attribute is going to be resilience because that's going to determine how much is going to cost you to repair your sneakers after every run. Then comes luck and comfort. The thing with luck right now, the gems are just not worth opening because they cost a lot more to open than what you can buy them for in the marketplace. So if you look at the marketplace right now, you can see that the floor price on gems are at 0.1. And I made the mistake of opening this efficiency gem for 40 GST. That's $190 for something that's worth about $10, $15 in the marketplace. Now, to be fair, the efficiency gem that I opened is actually worth almost one entire soul. But again, it's still, I still spent $140. Even if I could sell it for one soul, that, that would only be $100, $105. So it's just not worth it. That's why I'm currently not even touching luck for upgrades right now, at least the way the game is set up currently. With future upgrades, I'm sure that they will put more utility into these and make it more viable. At that point, then we'll have to switch our strategy and optimize for uh, the different changes and upgrades that they make to the game. And the final one right now is comfort. So comfort, there's not much utility for it right now, but comfort, what it's supposed to do is earn you GMT, which is the other token that Stepin has available. However, you don't earn GMT, I believe, till around level 29 or 30. So it's really not that important until you get to those levels. And at that point, you can probably just get a new shoe with your earnings. And if it becomes important, just max out comfort all the way up to level 30 and then switch shoes. So for the moment, 
Luck and comfort are not important at all. The best strategy is to put all your upgrades into efficiency and resilience. Now, the way that I split them up is for every 12 upgrade points that I have, I put 10 into efficiency and two into resilience. So every 12 points, 10 into efficiency, two into resilience over and over again. All right, here's a breakdown of your efficiency and how much GST you can earn per minute. These are just rough estimates from another user in the community. You can see at 34 efficiency, he was hitting one GST per minute. At 70, he was hitting about one and a half. At 100, he was hitting 1.79. That's more or less around where I'm at today. And if you add that up, that gives you pretty much what I've got the last two days on my walks. So if we look at their GST breakdown from the white paper, this is how it's broken down. It's based on the player's average speed, player's sneaker efficiency, player's sneaker efficiency's coefficient, so that means gem, socket, NFT badges, the system value, so this is the value set by the game developer, which is always subject to change, and parameter, a range of system values. So you also have to account for randomness because even if you run in optimal speed, there's still a randomness factor. So that must have been what played a part on these two days and when I go on my run today, I will see how this results. I'm estimating that by the time I max out my sneaker, I will probably be around 160 efficiency. And you can see that this member here at 145 was earning 2.168 GST per minute at 145. So if I am to expect around, let's say 2.2 GST per minute, that would be 55 GST per day. At today's prices, that would mean 260 $61 per day earned. Once I get my nine shoes and double up my energy cap by next month, if the GST prices stayed the same, that would mean that I'd be earning around $522 per day for walking or jogging for 50 minutes. Here you can see the level up table, how much it costs for each level. And you'll notice that the main ones to focus on is level five which is going to cost basically what the first four levels cost together. To get to level 10, it's 30 GST, which is basically, again, the last four levels together. To upgrade to level 20 is 80 GST. And then to upgrade to level 30, it's 150 GST. But I believe that you also have to pay in GMT when upgrading to levels 29 and level 30. What I recommend you doing if you're not a runner is to just get a jogger. With a jogger, you can both walk or run. Look for a shoe with high efficiency and high resilience, as close to 10 as possible when you add them up together. And don't worry too much about the mint count in the beginning. After running, always repair first before leveling up your shoe. And for every 12 points that you use for upgrades, put 10 towards efficiency and two towards resilience. Your goal should be to max out your shoe and build up to at least three sneakers. With three sneakers, you'll be able to double your energy cap and make twice as much the amount of money per day. Ideally, you want one uncommon shoe to run with with two commons, but you can also do three commons and that's fine too. Make sure that you're running every 24 hours before the next replenish because remember that every six hours it replenishes 25% until you're capped out. So if your energy is capped out, you don't run and the replenish period comes, you miss out on that 25%, you miss out on money. Now, with all that being said, if you want to know about these projects when I first get into them and they're still cheaper, you need to join my mentorship program where I post everything as soon as I get into it. No rug pulls, no Hail Marys. I do all the research, I do all the work, and then I post it in the Discord. In this group, I share every single trade that I take with my complete trading plan, entry, stop loss, take profit, all of it. I teach you guys how to trade using leverage to maximize your capital. I teach you how to use the correct position sizing and risk levels for your capital so that you guys never have to worry about blowing up your account again. In addition to that, I also post passive income opportunities. I post NFT projects, play to earn opportunities, and much, much more. Now, there are limited spots for this group because there's so many people that are trying to get in, but there's only so much time and so many people that I can work with at one time. So if you guys are interested, make sure to click the link in the description below.
I'm telling you guys, crypto is a once in a generation opportunity to change your life. I went from a broke failed artist to a regular nine to five working job to retiring in 2017 because of crypto. It changed my life and I know it can change yours as well, but these opportunities will not last forever. So please, if you're interested in joining the mentorship group, sign up in the link in the description below. If not, then I strongly suggest that you check out the next two videos that come up on the screen because those are the videos that YouTube thinks that you should watch next. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will catch you on the next one. As always, peace and love.